Three, two, one. <laughs> so, like I said, you haven't come off. Yeah. Yet. So, um, some artists have been very fortunate that the break-even point has returned and it's gone way over, and so yeah. they have. There's actually been a profit there. See. Right. How much of that profit they then um, enjoy is down to what deal they made in the first place. In the first place. But I, what I wonder is, I wonder how much of that is explained. Because well, maybe if, the, if everything was explained you, properly... Do you mean how much, it, how much of it the artist um, understands all that. decides he doesn't want to understand and then decides he does want to understand, it's up to the artist. Some people know full well, or they, they go in knowing that it's an investment in them. And then when they see that the investment is um, flourishing, mm -hmm. they want to take control of, of the, the thing without knowing how the marketing go. Yeah, but all that should be, I, mean, I don't know, maybe. They should sit see, down and get that No one can say, or... it's me, it's me, mm -hmm. it's we. Mm -hmm. when, when, you know, it's a hand-in-hand -hand thing. Mm -hmm. um, the music business, it, it has to be. The artist's um, value, the artist's value, the artist's um, ability. And it also has to be the marketability and the marketing ability of the record company and how much they have to spend to get the artist even recognized. Yes. Right? And who's going to pay for that? Yes. yes. Who's going to... What record company is going to invest in you make you big, famous, and mega, and then you off and leave and them. Scarp her off, yeah. Right. So yeah. it's really interesting talking to you about it, because yeah. um, I'm now seeing a, a slightly, a bit like, I'm an, I'm an I run a business, so the, I, I'm used to kind of thinking of the figures. Or, right, in, in I mean, is everyone going to come into your shop and pay you less than you've paid for your goods? No. They, They're yeah. not going to do that. So that's why yeah. it was really good to hear that side. But then what that leads me to, because one of the things I, I, when I started running my business, you always find every now and again you come to a situation where no one's agreeing, everybody's upset about something. And then you realise, I've got to write terms and conditions. So my terms, for the first, say, 10 years of my business, I was constantly revising my terms and conditions. Yeah. So that when new people came to join my, my business or use it, it's like, those are the terms and conditions of service, take it or leave it sign so that you, you you can say you've read it and then and then we all were and i tried to make them fair obviously but i've made them clear so that there's no, there was no there was so over the years there have been less and less conflict right. between myself or either the teachers or the pet the the, the, the um because it's like a learning and therapy center or the um or the or the people that use it because you because you just be you learn to be more clear to avoid conflict so that's the purpose of terms and conditions, isn't it? There you go, and you set them and you move them. They, they are movable goalposts. Because <laughs> you kind of learn, when you're running, you kind of live and learn. So you found, I found I had to keep on adding little bits because each time a new client will find an, another reason to have to a conflict. To go around, yeah. <laughs> So you, so you have, you <laughs> say, for the avoidance of doubt, right? Yeah. These are the terms. That's why... You, when you're on the internet, if you don't click on the terms and conditions, you can't go no further. Mm. That's right. That's right. And unfortunately, at the chance of being at least a fraction known, mm -hmm. a lot of musicians skip over the terms and conditions and go, you want to be, yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 yeah. And That's then right. when it's at the end, they go, oh, did I sign that? Mm. That means I get nothing and they get everything. Yeah. But you wanted that. You signed to say that. Yeah. They should really scrutinise. Well, yeah. The, the best thing is to have a lawyer on board. Yes. Uh, One who really understands the business yeah. as well. Not just any old lawyer. Um, so. A music business lawyer. Okay. So we've talked a bit about that business. And I, you know what? I've, you've cleared up a few things in my head. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's really really good so you really understand it so do you feel that mm. you've um had your as a result of you understanding it, is it something you've developed again as a bit like my terms and conditions that developed mm. as time went on I mean, as you became more knowledgeable or yeah did there, you know there from records, the beginning? There are records that i made mm -hmm. that have run at a loss for me mm -hmm. since conception 
Mm -hmm. There was a company that I agreed to give them, oh, <laughs> I agreed to give them 50% of my publishing right. And my publishing right had to be shared with a co-writer that I then had to give 50% of my 50%. That meant that I was actually only on 25% of yeah. my own thing. And the publisher was on a big fat 50. Mm -hmm. And my co-writer was on... The same as you. The same as me. When, it, when I should have been on 50 and the two of them should have been on 25, 25 each. Yeah. So you learnt from that? <sighs> I big never time. did it again. Good. Good. <laughs> That's good. You've done so much, you know. So do you feel that um, um, do you feel that as a as a black man, say for example, as an African man, do you feel that you, if you because of all you've done and all the talent that you've got, there's no doubt about that, and all the range of things you can do. I don't know many people that are kind of out there in the mainstream, earning a lot of money that can do the wide range of things that you can do. So you know. What, how does that work in the you know in the real world as, as, as well, from a from a black perspective? Do you feel that we always get kind of less than what we should be getting? Obviously, yeah, we yeah. do. We not all of us. In terms are, of adulation, as well as um, finances. not all of us are able to collect it all while we're alive. Yeah. I mean, look at the life of Bob Marley. Mm. At the age of thirty-six, he left us. Yeah, very young. His work is and has been regurgitated and regurgitated. So many times. Time and time over, right? Yeah. He Different himself albums. never lived to see that. Yeah. So you got to think, would I be like Bob Marley and not live to see? Or would I be the one who lived to see, but never became a Bob Marley. You have to ask yourself that. Mm. Uh, and for me, life is one of the most precious things that uh, we can possess. Yes. And I am currently great grandfather to two. Wow. So that I, I couldn't have paid or I couldn't have earned enough money to keep me alive if it wasn't God's will yes. that I'm alive this day and actually have seen my great grandchildren mm. Mm. okay um, so that you know I've seen my children my children's children in my children's children's children and my mom and dad are still alive Gosh, you're so lucky. <laughs> Every, so, and everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm truly wow. blessed that I've got, you know, all the family around, all the kids around, all the grandkids around, the great grandkids around. That is so, a real blessing. that for me is richness. That is richness. Yeah. You know? I'm on the grand grandmother bit, but not the well, great grandmother bit. Step up. And I've lost <laughs> my mum. Step up. <laughs> well, we've been a bit young. The oldest is only 10. Oh, well, my oldest granddaughter is 27 now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, he's a bit young to have children yet. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But yeah. that's lovely. That's really, really good yeah, to hear. Yeah, that. It's, it's, yeah, it's warm. You know, it's, it's it is. warm. It is. Yeah, and money can't buy that. No, you can't really. Money truly. cannot buy So that. you've managed to manage your life enough for you to I've enjoy. I've managed to survive. <laughs> yeah, and to enjoy, um, to be kind of um, a calm leader in your within your family and a relevant member of your family yeah yeah to, to, so that you can enjoy it because i think that is part of managing your life not everybody can speak of even if they have all that you have in terms of the the people uh you speak about them yeah as, as and i can see from what you're saying that they're very much there you're very much interacting yeah. with them 
and they're very we're important. We're living a five generation situation. See, that's, yeah, so that is about um, self management and managing mm. your family and, and somehow managing your and Picking your up side. the pieces for each other and caring yeah. about each that's other. Good. Making yeah. sure that, you know, things work. We haven't done much music, so. Um, oh, I've done that all my life. <laughs> do, do, uh, shall I show you what else I've got here? Oh, let's have a look now. I've got, um, okay, so just kind of to fit the music into the question in there. All right. So, um, so obviously we talked about Louisa Marx and that's the Lovers Rock. Mm. Um, when did uh, Lovers Rock um, come into your history, musical history? Well, I say? if Lovers Rock be Lovers Rock, it started there with Louisa, because that was the first big record that I played on, that I'd been involved with. Mm -hmm. And that was the record that made me know mm -hmm. that I knew what to do. Uh, okay. To, you know, to, to... And I think you had this label that was actually called Lovers Rock. You're known as actually well, the person the, that introduced Lovers Rock. The thing is, right, that the Lovers Rock label and the Lovers Rock genre mm -hmm. kind of go hand in hand in that the man who invested in what was called Lovers Rock mm -hmm. by the sound systems, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because this man, Dennis Harris, was very interested in using blues dance terms mm -hmm. to, um, to make records. I mean, mm -hmm. we made an album that said, Oh, say, go there. And that was a term at the time in the dance hall where the DJ would lift up the record and say, Who say? Who say? And, uh, and the audience would go, Go there! And I remember the Go there. <laughs> right. You know, I and remember that. Bada, bada, bada. <laughs> you know, it, it's evidenced in the film Babylon where Shaka is going, Who say? Yeah. Right? That was a sound system chant. Yeah. And Lover's Rock was also another sound system chant to inform your audience mm -hmm. what kind of music was coming. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm mind for prepared to look to the closest girl that mm -hmm. are, that <laughs> didn't want to dance with or, or, or his favorite or, you know, or make sure that nobody don't dance with his girl. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the next tune is Lovers Rock. This is Lovers Rock. I mean, and then when Dennis heard about that, he thought it was a great title. Mm -hmm. And and the word on the street mm -hmm. to have a label called what year Lovers was that? Rock. What year was that? Well, the Lovers Rock label came about in seventy five, seventy six. Oh wow! Early, right? <laughs> um, it might have even have been seventy seven, but mid seventies. Yeah. You know the label, yeah. but dance and dance. The sound systems were calling that style of music, Lovers Rock, mm. and uh, the Lovers Rock label capitalized on that. Mm. And the first song on the Lovers Rock label mm -hmm. was a song written by my friend John Kapai, um, okay. whose father's Nigerian and whose mother's Welsh. Mm. Uh, the song, I'm in Love with the Dreadlocks oh, by Brown one. Sugar. Yes. That was the first release on the Lovers Rock oh. label. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> by then, people were, you know, locked in to calling the genre Lover's Rock. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, earlier on this afternoon, I had a meeting with a, a, a brewery in um, Broccoli that want to make a new beer for next year. And the title of the beer is going to be Lovers Rock. Oh. <laughs> so right. I'm not sure I should have been said, saying that because it's confidential. But. Oops. No one heard. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, and did Lovers Rock come before your roots or was it Lovers Rock first they, then roots came? They, well, the roots was there before Lovers same, Rock. Same. Because... As well as being a lovers band, Matumbi was a roots conscious band, mm. right? And the fact that I had worked with a lot of females like Marie Pierre, mm -hmm. um, 15, 16, 17, Janet Kay, mm -hmm. um, you know, Louisa Mark, mm -hmm. 
Sonia Ferguson, you know, that kind of set the tone. Did you do the song Black Skin Boy? Yes. Oh, shit, I didn't bring that one. Oh. Oh, but I recognised the 15, 16, 17. I yeah. see, I didn't look close enough to that label. Well, know. the thing was that that, la one. that label, you can hear my talents there, but it says produced by Castro Brown. Oh, that's why I didn't notice it. Um, but I'm actually, on that song, mm -hmm. I'm doing the same as I've done on Caught You in a Lie, which is mm -hmm. play the bass, mm -hmm. the guitar, mm -hmm. the keyboards, the organ. I really like that tune. Black Skin Boy? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of those tunes where I was I always want to play it to the men. You know when you go you're in a dance and the, and all of a sudden you're, you're listening to some proper good roots or something, and all of a sudden the the DJ says this is for the woman then, and they play some really silly soft stuff, yeah. and you think we don't want to listen to that. The women all kind of cringe. Black they think, skin boys. Yeah. So I was, I always felt like I should I I would turn the tables and play that one for the men. The only thing no. is that's a good tune though. That's not yeah. a cringy tune, but it is it's a little the, bit. It is a, yeah. it is a little bit, but the bass line isn't cringy. Hello, that's, that's me right <laughs> the, there. The, the, <laughs> the, that is not a cringy <laughs> bass line. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had it on me now. I would definitely be playing it right Easy. now. Easy. Next time. <laughs> next time, next time. Um, but I've got, I have got a Lover's Rock here, one called, but you sang it again. Let me hear. Choose Me. Yes. Do you um, like that one? That tune, actually, the rhythm track is made by... John Kopai again mm. and Javani and I walked into the studio and they were doing a version of Peaceful Woman mm. I'm a peaceful woman okay. I don't believe in doing wrong for um, the sister of Pauline um, hmm, I'll tell you her name in a minute because um, she's passed away as well but she she was gonna sing this tune, Catelyn, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carolyn Catelyn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? She was gonna make a version of that tune. Marcia Griffiths had done a version of a peaceful woman, and they were doing a version of it. And I walked into the studio and I said, "Why are you not making another version of a version of a version? Mm -hmm. Why don't you write a new song?" Yes. And uh, Dennis Harris said to me. I was a runner for more dogs than any songwriter. What? Well, you can't write a song? I said, hey, I'll write you a song right now. See? On that rhythm there. So yeah. So, so yeah, I said, I'll bet you a hundred pounds. <laughs> and he bet me a hundred pounds, and I wrote the song right there. Take the money, I go down to the pub and start drinking liquor. And I sang all the parts as well, just to, to make sure that they knew what I meant what? about singing See. the tune. Choose me. Choose. Okay. And I'll tell you what, this song was inspired by a Nigerian friend of mine called Rudolph. Okay. And when he passed away, I felt it. And um, he used to always say to me, Dennis, listen to this. Maybe it's a sad situation, I know, when more than one man wants you so. And it's even worse when you got to choose and more and all but one of us is going to lose. Hmm. So then, and he goes, I'd love to finish the tune. And I did. Rest in peace, Ruth. Let me play, let me play. Let's start again. Yeah, so right. Keep from the beginning. <laughs> Come again. Come again. I know when more than one man wants you so, wants you so, and it's even worse when you know you must choose, and all but one of them is sure to lose, sure to lose. Right from the 
But there was, a, there was a phase when you were described as Blackbeard. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that phase or that stage well, of your... Well, in those days, yeah. I was dreadlocked and... Um, Blackbearded. And Blackbearded. <laughs> there came a time, however, when I felt I needed to change from yeah. that. So... The beard came off, the locks went, and um, it kind of opened a new chapter of my life, mm. you know, where I was working in different circles and moving in different circles, mm. um, and I felt, you know, that the new me was satisfactory. Mm. and the one that's still here now. Yes. So it was Matumbi, Blackbeard, and then Dennis Pavel. Is that the order? Correct. See. That's what I gathered. I just because what know. happened as well, there was another Blackbeard in Jamaica. Mm. And I thought, well, there's only one Dennis Pavel. See. So I made a new band and the band was called the Dub Band. And mm -hmm. I went on tour with an artist that I'd made many records with, mm -hmm. but we hadn't played live together, Linda mm -hmm. Quesi Johnson. Oh, yes. And then we teamed up and made a live act mm -hmm. out of Linda Quesi Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also been working with um, an act from the Ivory Coast, a man called Alpha Blondie and um, made a lot of records with him mm. and decided that I maybe will become a front of house sound engineer and I did that for a while mm -hmm. and um, but I came back to, to the thinking that my real work should have been with Linda Gressy Johnson mm -hmm. because I wanted to help um, his being understood by um, a wider audience mm. and you know by creating um, a 
live band mm -hmm. and playing the music that we'd created in the re recording studio and worked together. It it did it did the thing. I mean, I've been all over the world with Linton, including Africa, Australia, Same. you know, all over Europe. I don't hear much about him these days. Well, he says he's retired um, mm -hmm. from the, the live scene, mm -hmm. you know, because it's quite stressful mm -hmm. working with the band. Um, as you'd appreciate, what but he still of... he still does lectures and, and, and poetry readings. Oh yes, yeah. we've got a few of his tunes here. You have? Uh, I don't know if there are any of the ones. Oh, you said you did all of his music. Yeah, um, I was involved with all of Linton's work. We've got one figure rave, mm -hmm. man free. Yeah, man free is about dark as hell. Yes, yes. Um, five nights of bleeding. Yeah, base culture. Base culture. Come we go down. Come we go down. That's a little known one. <coughs> but these yeah. are the ones I like. That's why I happen to have Come them. Come, we go down there. Should you play that one? Oh, that's uh, yeah, great. Song of Blood. Oh, yeah. This is these are from um, his um, a mixture of poet and the roots and of um, forces of victory. It's a mixture of dread, beat, and blood, and forces of victory. Yeah. Mm. So I might, I'm gonna, I might play a couple of those, but in the meantime, while I'm kind of getting them ready, yeah. Um, I've got um, another tune here called Freestyle. Freestyle. It's freestyle. Is it still? It's yeah. <coughs> style. Is style. Oh, is it? Was style. That S T O I L. Style. style. Yeah. What's that? About? Style. <laughs> I, it's not I style. It, it's oh, style. Free, free style. Free, <laughs> free a style. A free a style. <laughs> and that's um, uh, my godfather Rico, Rico Rodriguez, playing trombone. Um, mm -hmm. Drummy Zed from Asbad on drums. Tony Gad on keyboards. John Capai on guitars. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself on the bass. Mm -hmm. Free a style. Right. Can I play that one then? Run it. Yeah. Come, we go down there. Hey. Hey. You're playing two. Right down there. You're playing two things. Come, we go down there. 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 Come, we go down there.
Johnson, wonderful, yep. wonderful poetry. So yeah, um, yeah. So I kind of pressed the wrong thing. So we're going to go back to free story. Free a story. Free story. We call it. <laughs> yeah. This more rootsy. Dub. Yeah, dub style. <laughs> Actually, I nearly put this song in the, in the film Babylon, but I decided not to. Yeah, that was one in the Babylon. That's me and my toasted endeavors. What time, Tosa? So you go. That was. I really like that one. Free story. Free a story. Free a story. I'm gonna try and look for that one and just kind of own it. One of right, my right. ones, but um, this one called Living in Babylon is from the um, the soundtrack uh, of the movie, yes, of Babylon. So yes. let's, let's just play it now. We, we're looking to wrap up soon around 10 ish, mm. so um, yeah, so we, we I don't know, we'll rewind and come again. <laughs> Down in the ghetto, no frack it to run. They wanna clap it on a go on like you cube. Say them, they wanna chuck it on a go on like you. I'm talking about a living in a Babylon. I'm talking about a living in a BC. Yeah, I mean that. But if you want to do it, I'm not going to read the lines. Yeah, we know. If you keep by if you want, stop probing into the skies. Because if you be greedy, the answer is dirt. 
man against man, man to face a fish your head. We're talking about a living in a Babylon. We're talking about a living in a this yard. Talking about a living in a Babylon. Speaking of surviving in a this yard. Love at any price, like a sugar or rice. Refusal of a friend, if it's cash, they'll be nice. We're talking about a living in a Babylon. Refusal of a friend. Downtown in the ghetto, you'll grow. Big, big time, them turn big man. Wrong teaching, we reach some survival force, them on love. Living in a Babylon. Victim, category, suspect, something for nothing you can be showed again, six months to two years, pure sweat, you might get parole, come out, go on the door, cause no one will even call you once you've been in that day home, yes, you're living in a bomb, we're talking about surviving in a this island. Politics is how they make it stink. Yes. They can't even think you that you're voting it. Voting it. Speaking of survival in a this island. Who counts the votes? How do you know the votes are represented over who voted? They can't even think that you're voting it. We'll make a plan to make every man a superstar. Yes. Don't forget there's a general election coming up soon. If you don't like what I'm going, vote and change that. Don't bother stay at home and say, tell me now I bother vote because I'm the same thing every time. Do something if you don't vote. Your fault if you don't get the result that you want. Hear me? Vote. Register to vote. Let your vote count in a this world. If you don't like what's going on, vote it out. At least there might be a change, you know? <laughs> At least. Yeah. So, um, yeah, rocking up, rocking up. But there's another one here called from an album called. It's gone up my head, but it's all oh, I can see. It. It's kind of orange with uh, red diamonds on it. Oh yeah, Is orange it? with red diamonds. What's yeah. the title of the tune? The tune's called Better. Better. All right. Well, what, that what was the album called? <laughs> that was from my Brain Damage album. Brain Damage. That's the one. That's why I couldn't remember it because it's called Brain Damage. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> it, it damages excuse. your brain. <laughs> and on Brain Damage, the song Brain Damage. I want you all to know that in the this place where I would normally have put a solo, I put a poem there. And the poem, the words of that poem were, right about now you're in tune to the thriller, stereophonic, high fidelic, showcase exotic taste. This is the captain speaking. I'd like to let you know you're on, you're on board. Flight long plumatic, destination in a space now i'll repeat that for you right right about now you're in tune to the thriller mm -hmm. stereophonic high fidelic showcase exotic taste stereo hi-fi exotic case all right this is the captain speaking i'd like to let you know you're on board flight long plumatic long play lp see mm -hmm. Destination Inner Space. Uh, the Inner Space was from the edge of the record to where the label is. That's the inner, the label is the Inner Space, right? Someone heard that record and thought, ah, I'll write a tune called Thriller. And we know who sang that oh. two years later, don't we? Oh, oh. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. The guy who heard that and wrote the song, his name was Rod Temperton. So he gave Rest the song to Michael Jackson? Well, the song got to Michael Jackson in the end. Uh -huh. But Rod Temperton from the group Heatwave, an Englishman, wrote that song. Mm -hmm. Not Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson mm -hmm. sang it. Mm -hmm. Quincy Jones produced it, but the composer was Rod Temperton. Mm -hmm. And someone showed me an article one day where he said, 
that that song was inspired by my song, which was two years earlier. Hmm. Wow. The way it is. Wow. So I'm gonna. I don't have brain damage on me. I was trying. No. To, it was. It was easy. My. Let's hope it. you never get brain damage. <laughs> no, no. Maybe that's why. Because I couldn't even remember. I, I remember. Yeah. See, yeah, you had you song. had brain damage trying to remember. Yeah. yeah anyway, this song better. I couldn't remember the picture. It's about. Um, I think you must have been Blackbeard in that one because I remember you had. A, it was you, your Blackbeard yeah, yeah. and dreadlocks on that one. Uh, I remember the visuals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was me. Yes. And uh, I'm wearing a Lyndon Cressy Johnson tour shirt on the album cover. Oh, I didn't notice that detail. Well. Okay. So let's just play this one. Let's just play this one. On this track. Little. That's me playing drums too. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty much a solo album. Except that I uh, invited a lady called Laura Logic to play saxophone. Hey, Mr. Bocha, won't you leave my merchandise alone? That's her playing sax. Why don't you bang a pop of your own? Full time now, I and I get low. I'm just back to you to take a bow. Get a perfect system, just don't go. Channel with you, surviving down there in the south. Say, retire that big duck tower. We won't get down. I'm back with you, I'm back with you. Don't listen to me, don't chat me, ready to go there. Let's me see. I'm playing all the instruments except for the saxophone. one of those tunes that get you all lost in it and then you almost forget you're the presenter. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's every man's right to demand better. Better, yes. Right? Because um, you, you don't want worse. Definitely not. There you go. Yes, definitely not. So I think I've come, gone through not all of them, but one or two. I'm going to might play one last one, but before that... Well, I haven't played that one, have I? What? The Ring Babylon? You just did? Just did that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Don't do it, Frank Bruno. <laughs> Jazz to pieces, is an interesting yeah, piece. Yeah, that is an interesting piece, which is why I just picked bits that I thought, oh, that's interesting, that's a bit... Well, this song, I recorded it twice. Yes. And um, edited one version into the other, using two different drummers, but um, all the same musicians. Okay. So from when it goes from reggae to a kind of punk um, thing. Yes. And it, the punk section is a new drummer with, with the same players. Okay. Um, and this piece was done for the scene in the film Babylon where Brinsley Ford goes 
uptown with his girlfriend's brother and witnesses um, some unsightly mugging. Mm. And um, so, I think I remember that bit of the well, knowing that that was going to happen, I timed the music to when they're going uptown, it's all nice and reggae, and then when that dastardly act takes place, it, the music change, changes. changes. Uh, it's yeah. the same song, it's the same piece of music, but it changes. Mm. Yeah, yes. So there's two different verses of the same song yes. wrapped in one. Yes, okay, we'll play that one. Okay, just <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to play one more because I've got one more here. There's always one more. Yeah, there's always one more. Tell you, tell you so, but I'm not going to ask you about it yet. I would, I'd just like you, just to finish off, just to tell us about your current projects. Well, um, as I said, I've just released um, a box set on mm -hmm. um, Bandcamp, mm -hmm. um, and it's a kind of cross section of some stuff that I've done. Just four CDs that I had put together uh, uh, a long time ago, and I hadn't actually got around to letting them out because of the politics and uh, of you know releasing stuff. But now with this new um, method of where people can just download it for their phone or download it See. to listen to. So just one um, track at a time, or the whole sort of set at a time. Well, yeah, the whole one CD one at a time. time, or the whole box, yeah. the whole set, you know. Mm -hmm. It's good. Hmm. And that's Bandcamp? Bandcamp, So yeah. what do they go on? Is, there, is it just Dennis Bovell? Dennis Band Bovell, or? Bandcamp, and I've got a range of material on there. Okay, so if you go to bandcamp.com, you'll see... Um, and then put in Dennis Bovell in the search. There you go. And there it is. And okay. there you go, a range of stuff. So tell, what, what, what is a... I mean, Bandcamp, I kind of discovered it... I think it was only last year, really. Mm. Uh, I, I downloaded... Um, I can't even remember the name of an artist, it was an African artist and I just 
discovered one tune of theirs and thought, oh, I'd love to hold up. And, uh, there you go. But it was Bandcamp. But what is it? What the, hell the whole is it thing is that um, Bandcamp um, takes a percentage for uh, the transaction to keep themselves alive. But people can order um, my material from anywhere around the world. And as soon as Bandcamp tell me that you've ordered it, I dispatch it. Oh, I see. So I know, I don't have to ask, um, how many uh, of X, Y, Z have, I dispa have been yeah. dispatched? Mm -hmm. I know, and it alleviates the kind of, the, the distrust that you have with record companies. Mm. So, they, but they, they, the dispatch is the download, you allow them to download no, it? Um, no, well, the download, download is being allowed to, you know, to download it, but I have got some some whole physical, physical season stuff. and so people can pay for that separately and you can and, and I will see. dispatch it within 10 days okay okay that's good right so people know that now and is there anything else or anything else happening that you we need well, to know about um where we can come and see you performing or doing something or i'm actually MCing? on friday i'm going to be at um the house of fun <laughs> in Minehead in Somerset, where Madness's weekend, <laughs> usually yearly weekend, is called House of Fun. I think a bunch of other people are going to be there. Um, Adrian Sherwood, Tipper Irie, mm. um, to remember, you know, House, of, the House of Fun. The House you, of Fun. Mm, it's, in, it's, in, it's in Butlins in Minehead in Somerset. Mm. And it's fr the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't know if there's any tickets left because these things have a way of getting sold out. But um, I'm going to be there on Friday night when, when it kicks off. Mm. And are you just you're going to be actually performing or MC? Well, I'm going to be DJing. I'm going to do a DJ set on Friday night because last year I played, uh, I did a set with um, Janet Kay and Carol Thompson, yeah. and the year before that I did a set with um, my dub band. So uh, this in the year, same event. in the same event, yeah, okay. it's a yearly event and it's called yeah. House of Fun, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, you need to talk on the mic, <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> so this weekend I'm there and um, in, in a couple of days time I'm off to Austria yeah. to work in Vienna mm -hmm. with um, a group called Double Standard and um, the, the Firehouse Crew, I think. Yeah, oh, fire. the Firehouse Crew, they're still doing stuff? Yes, oh, in, wow. in Austria. Okay. So, so you just come back from Argentina, what happened over there? Well, I... I, I no, I did... Um, oh, music, okay. I did, a, I did a show in a place called La Trastienda oh. and then another place in called uh, um, Club Babylon in... Um, mm -hmm in um, Cordoba and while I was there um, I had the pleasure of mixing in a Ken Booth tune a dub version of a Ken Booth tune called um, Argentina mm -hmm. and which is part of the the, Gram the Grammy nomination of the album um, Roots Rad Sly, Sly and Robbie meets Root Radix mm -hmm. um, the final battle mm -hmm. You know, and uh, a bunch of people on there, including my good friend Brinsley Ford. Big up yourself, Brinsley Ford. Yeah. Yes. And um, you know, this album has been nominated for a Grammy. Let's yes. see who wins. But yes. then I was called in to do a dub mix of the Ken Booth tune that's on that album. So that's finished, and oh. um, they can put it out. So you're doing something like every day, every week. You have every to. month. You have to keep rolling time. because you yes. know, otherwise you gather moss. But yeah, but it's not as if you have you're not having difficulty in doing that because you get called. Yes, it's, it's not like you're pushing yourself up. In going, fact, and me, and me. And in fact, I've going. also just re well, also just released on the Leaf label mm -hmm. um, a new artist called Sarati Kowar, Indian, and um, he's got a tune called Kuli. And if you go on the internet, you can see Kuli. And I've done a dub mix to Kuli. Mm. So Cooley dub mix uh, is, you know, pretty a different style of me playing bass with an Indian drummer. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with, with the guys with Punjabi and mm. it's all about the story of how um, Ganja got to Jamaica.
because you know the Indians took it there, took the seeds there mm -hmm. in their suitcases when they were being um, sequestered to um, join the, the the evil that was slavery. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I understood a bit about that history because a, a sister called Jacqueline Crooks she wrote a, a story that talked about the African stroke Indian um, experience of slavery. Yeah. Yeah, because before that I didn't know much about the Indian mm -hmm. part. So, okay, so, <sighs> time has gone. It's now uh, quarter past ten, nearly. Oh, so we're past gonna, my bedtime. Past, past, past bedtime. So we're going to wrap up, but it just feels like we just started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to play, as we say... Um, bye-bye to the listeners and give thanks for your time. We don't time, say bye-bye, we say see you later. See you later and uh, give thanks for your time, your energy, your listening ears, mm. those that have tuned in. Hello. And um, those that will be tuning in later because I'm going to try and make this come live and stuff. And Viral. And somebody was complaining there, oh, it's gone off, it's gone off, but you know. We'll well, it's going to go off, don't you worry. <laughs> it's going to go off big time. <laughs> so we give thanks um, for your presence in yes. our studios, um, Dennis Bovell. Love. Thank you for finally answering my call. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yes. And thank you for not giving up. No, no. No. Sounds like I have She was like, like that all the time that you're coming on my show. <laughs> you're coming on my show. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There was like a couple of seconds of give up. It's like, no, I can't give up. I've got to keep on with this. Just when I thought I got rid of her, <laughs> she come back at me. Right, so you know, the warrior queen, dangerous. <laughs> Don't ever try to evade the warrior queen. Bridging, I tell them all they right. Listen, just dry your bricks and heal. And come to realmusicfm.com, real yeah. peace cultural music show, or the conscious living vibration. Yeah. Where you know that your history is going to get a good chance of being aired. Oh, exposed. You know, exposed. Tunes that you thought you'd forgotten about, names you thought you'd forgotten about, will come out here. Exposed. <laughs> exposed. So thank you very much. Thank so you. I'm going to play this last one as we say, um, see you later, as you say. Yeah. Uh, tell you so. All right. See, okay. so tell you so. Okay. See you later. Tell you so. Tell you so. <laughs> Yes, and a big thank you to Dennis Bovell. And that was him. Yes, and sorry, apologies to those on live Facebook Live. You're going to have to see part two, the second part, later. I hope it can still come up. Dennis Bovell, music singer, writer, musician in the realmusicfm.com studios on the, on the Roots Feast Cultural Music Show with myself, Sister and Fetcher, the Royal Queen. We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks for life, health and strength. Saying so goodnight now. And give thanks for your time and your energy. And for listening. Hey.